So we have a, uh, to, to put this in kind of a management framework, if you will, these, these, uh, this vision statement and these value systems and these principles um, are not, can't, can't just stand alone. There has to be a way to operationalize them into the way our businesses behave. So we have a, we start again with our business values instead, that's the Chevron, the Chevron way, that our vision and values. We have a set of corporate policies that build off of those values. We have policies on anti, antitrust, anti-harassment. We have a new policy on human rights, which if we have time, I might take a couple of minutes, and you're interested, I might take a couple of minutes later on to talk about. Um, but it's policy 520, it's a, it's a big step out for this company to have a policy on human rights that uh, impacts the way we operate. Environmental performance, we have a policy on that. Um, and, and, and so we have this set of policies that all employees are required every couple of years to be familiar with and to acknowledge that they have read them. We call our business conduct, uh, business and ethics uh, code of conduct. And then we have um, uh, manual compliance and procedures, which is far more difficult and harder to get through, but, but anyway, we all have to read that as well. Um, then we have um, the operational excellence management system. And I want to I emphasize this point because this is, a, this is a systematic approach to managing um, safety, health, environmental <coughs> performance, reliability, efficiency. OEMS has 13 elements. One of the elements is security, another is environmental performance, and one that my group owns is stakeholder engagement. And each of the 13 elements has certain expectations that are uh, uh, articulated in, in, the, in the process that each business unit has to have a process to implement. So you have to have a process to uh, engage with the communities. You have to have a process to engage with government officials for example. And these processes are audited every three to five years by uh, corporate and, and, and BU audit teams. Um, so there is some level of accountability. Uh, and um, the audits then produce um, basically a gap analysis. And the business units are given um, suggestions on how to improve that. And then they're obligated to go back and improve that. But the point is that every business in our company has an OEMS strategy um, around the 13 elements. Um, and then finally, we provide, we don't let them just you know, flounder out there. We're going to give them some tools and some guidance. So the corporation and uh, in various departments provides uh, these tools and guidance. In my shop, we've developed a standardized uh, stakeholder engagement process to, uh, to implement uh, OE element 10. Uh, the one I, I talked about. Um, and then we have a standard uh, process called ESHA, which is Environmental Social Health Impact Assessment Process. And this is a process that is required to be applied to uh, any capital project over $25 million. And depending on the, the size of the project, there are various levels of, of implementation. The $25 million level is really a screening process, but the more complex the project is, the more detailed the uh, analysis is. And it's to look at the positive and negative impacts of, of a, a capital project um, before it's developed. My group owns the social impact assessment component. We develop the guidelines, we develop the tools, we, do, we develop the training, and, um, and we conduct um, or consult on social impact assessments um, uh, on uh, where I think we're have our fingers in about 40 or 50 capital projects right now. 